Hello everyone, welcome to a review here at Total Toy Recon and a special review. Yes, as you can see, we have episode one, the Phantom Menace toys in front of us. Yes, you know what? I've had these toys for, some of these toys for 21 years now, 1999 Hasbro right there. And I've never noticed that it does not say the Phantom Menace on the packaging. A New Hope, New Gunray, will he stand within the Phantom Menace? Will he support the Phantom Menace? None of that says Phantom Menace on here. How did I not notice that? Which means it was kept a secret even up to that point. It was kept a secret that they did not put anything. Now, I know that there was a lot of marketing uh, with Episode 1, Episode 2, Episode 3, and then after the fact – um, they started switching the titles of Empire and Jedi and really including the episodes to really work on that, that it was this six-story, uh, six-episode story arc. So maybe that was on purpose, um, but it does not say The Phantom Menace on here, which I cannot believe. I've never noticed that, so it's very strange. Um, since it's, today is the anniversary release of The Phantom Menace 21 years ago, I thought uh, we'd just highlight some really cool figures. This is uh, Nuke Gunray. Um, bad guy. We've got Captain Tarples here. Yes, these are these are mine, and these are originally in the package. And as you can see, they come with the stand, Comtech chips. Even got a more unique figure out here called uh, Odie Mandrell. And uh, you know, love that love to have characters from the pod race. There was a lot of these, and the, these became really uh, not this one in particular, but a lot of the pod racing characters became very sought after. Um, Gazno, the pit droid, the pit droids, were, I think was what more people wanted. Um, However, some of them really started to get unique and a lot harder to find. Um, I think – I'm not sure, but I think that there was a Rias uh, made. That, that's the character that kind of looks like a billy goat with three eyes. Um, I think one of them was actually uh, a pod racer at one point, and I think he was one of the last ones to get made. But you know, we do have these very vintage collections. I think these are all from the same line. Actually, Captain Tarples may be from an, the next line. Yeah, he's from another line. <laughs> Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Nuke gun rays will probably slightly better order. So I had a bunch of these out, um, working through a lot of my, um, of my, uh, I don't know, my archive uh, of going through toys, figuring out stuff. But this was the one that really uh, kind of captured my attention, and uh, we posted a picture of it not too long ago on our Instagram page, which is just Total Toy Recon, all one word, you know, Instagram.com, Total Toy Recon, um, and. Uh, it got a lot of attention. Uh, a lot of people were interested in it. If you can see, the box is fairly beat up. Um, however, if you notice, factory tape, factory tape. It has not been retaped. And I know I did buy this bad boy at Walmart because that is the remnants of a Walmart sale sticker. Yes, sir. Um, so in my research, uh, getting things like I try to prep everything so I can get these up very quickly up on YouTube and such. Um, I brought this, I asked for, you know, I typed in OP and Qui-Gon Jinn with Snapping Jaws. I wanted to get the figure, uh, an image made for the figure already so I could po post it. And it came up on walmart.com for $21.99 out of stock. Um, so I know online sales were not big back in 1999, so that's not a remnant. But that means somebody had posted one of these and only wanted $21.99 for it, which I think is kind of funny. Um, it is a 21-year-old toy, but it's an odd toy because, one, it's a fish. Um, not many fish at that point in the Star Wars universe that weren't like a little accessory for somebody to eat. And even then, eh, not all that often. And then there's also this whole scene here with Qui-Gon has a spear, as you can see, like a harpoon, that he crawled out of – out of the uh, the bongo to uh, ward off this fish. So I think that's an even weirder thing. So this was something that they looked at in, in pre-production. Maybe there were production photos or uh, maybe even just concept drawings, and then they took it out. But somebody at Hasbro said, let's make this. Kids like monsters, fish, and things. Um, so it's a bit of a crab and kind of a, you know, a deep-sea fish uh, mixture. But... I thought it would be interesting to open it up, and since I've had it for 21 years and never cut through it, hopefully there's nothing, nothing alive in the box um, that's been feasting on this creature. But I thought, let's take a look. So the packaging is awesome. We do have, of course, the uh, the, the Phantom Menace uh, logo with Darth Maul. We do have a, a picture of the figure that you get, as well as the, uh, the Opie itself. 
It says it pose requires hand support, which is kind of interesting um, that they do have it swimming here. And then, you know, we do get this great side box art. Like what's nice about Hasbro is they've always designed things that at any angle as it's sitting on the shelf, you know exactly what it is. And especially if you have a lot of these things, I mean, the, 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 the one figure and creature uh, set became or vehicle became very uh, pr uh, prominent on the toy shelf. So like you got Jabba the Hutt and a two headed creature. You got uh, a stormtrooper and a do back. You know a biker scout bike and the biker scout. So you know lots of things like that. So it was really uh, an interesting time for Hasbro. They really did a great job. But here we go. Twenty one years later, we are finally opening up this odd and unique Star Wars toy. Here we go. Now I'm gonna put it all probably put it all back in the box. But no bugs have been living in there. And this has been in st multiple storage bins uh, of mine. And I finally got everything under one roof, which is really nice. So here's always like this. And I, and I did post pictures of, uh, of one of these not too long ago. So this is a Hasbro toy and game guide. They don't really do these much anymore. So you get the first wave of figures. Yes. Well, not all of them. Turn the page. <laughs> now we've got the first wave of figures. Um, I did get all of these on opening night. Um, so I did have them all. I did have the Comtech uh, chip reader too. And then this was the basic uh, figure accessory set. So you actually got a robe to put over Qui-Gon. Um, and then later they released it, which I thought was funny. So if you got Obi-Wan Obi or Qui-Gon in the first wave, you actually did not have a robe. And then later they re-released them with robes. Why they just didn't include this robe with uh, Mace Windu with all of them, I'll never know. But that was their thing. Um, so here's the lightsaber ones. Those were, I think I had those at one point. They were really kind of lame. Um, but they were the deluxe figures. And I do have all three of these. Wow, I did really spend a lot of money. Somewhere I think I have a Caddo. I'm pretty sure I have a Caddo. I definitely have this. Um, and I have two of these of the flash speeders. One's broken and one's in great shape. Have two or three of these of the Naboo fighters. And then, uh, Trade Federation droids have those as well. And both the pod racers. And until recently, I did have all the Queen Amidala fashion dolls, but I gave them to a friend, uh, a friend's little girl. And then here we have some classic Star Wars Power of the Force um, figure releases. So I think I have literally everything on these two pages. Uh, not so much this. I might have had some of these games at one point, and I think I got rid of them. Um, yeah, a lot of odd 3D puzzle things. Um, and then they had these uh, battle bags, which I do have some of these somewhere, and I've yet to uncover them. And then the Jabba Glob. So that was a Jabba the Hut that actually just burped slime. Very weird thing that they did. Um, crazy. But this uh, CD-ROM Millennium Falcon playset would be really cool. I think I got rid of that. I think I had it at one point, but I love the seats. So I wonder if it's still down there somewhere in storage. That's <laughs> what's scary is I could have it. I don't know anymore. And the guns and the lightsabers, of course. I didn't get a lot of these. I think I got this at one point in that, but I didn't get the guns and stuff. Wish I would have gotten that Nerf Blaster. So anyway, let's get to the fish. So typical Hasbro packaging. Um, everything kind of folds out. No real instructions here. So here's the fish itself. Very odd. And then we do have the jaw here. And it does. Oh, spring still works. Amazing. And I'd also like to come out and say that uh, the plastic itself, even the rubber... Um, there is no, there is no wires in here that you could shape it how you wish, uh, make it move around and stuff. But the, the, the paint and the plastic is not sticky after all this time. Now I, I recently unearthed a job of the hut just from 2010, which is only 10 years old. This is 21 years old. And the job was all slimy. The paint itself was just coming off in my hands. It was very weird. So we do have a twist tie here. Um, I don't know why I'm bothering. I should just cut this off with wire covers, but Hey, you know, we're living it up. So, uh, well, no real instructions needed. Make sure the legs are on right, and boom, it's in there. Very unusual creature, but the legs are great. They don't move, but the arms do, so you could give that fish swimming look like this. And it's not as if, as if you can see, it's not as if it really needs a lot of standing uh, help. Um, we'll twist these off and get Qui-Gon out of there and see what's going on here. So please forgive me for the time that it takes to get me yeah, help with it just cut the damn things off oh no the resellable value of this thing so let's get Qui-Gon out of there all right 
get this all. This is I always I'll keep all this, put it back in the box. Um, Qui Gon himself, though, let's do a little bit close up here. Qui Gon himself is a pretty decent figure. Nice robe detail. Um, he does feel a little bit like he's aged in time. Like the the texture of it at all is very strange. Um, so we do have the rubber band itself around Qui Gon's hand that held the rubber band is completely deteriorated and it's actually become a part of his hand now which is weird look at this that's the rubber band that was around the hand and it's now a part of him now granted it's been on there for 21 years what would i expect but ew gross so this is this is part of the thing that most i i, I don't know i feel as if like certain toy retailers should also be thinking about the future um because uh, collectibles are such, you know, it, the toy industry is such a collectible industry now that people collect things. They like the job of the hut. They think ten years from now this thing's going to be degrading. But they even think, well, what kid's going to have this in ten years? Um, so it's a little weird. But um, a lot of the display pieces that we've been pulling out of the the episode one three packs and figures from the nineties, the rubber bands that are around a lot of the figures and hold things in place have deteriorated so now we've got things bouncing around inside the box so is that still mint condition is that still something that people have to consider um so the spear is very cool uh, this is one of those weird things that was in the in the packaging but not really in the movie so it's nice that he's swimming and and you know what's kind of interesting is as decent as this qui-gon is without the uh without the the respirator on his face, sorry, without the respirator here on his face, he would make a decent Qui-Gon Jinn. He even has, look at this, he has ankle joints. So he can move his feet, both his feet up and down, give him that swimming look, which is really nice. But it would be, it would have been great if we could have actually used him as a regular everyday figure. Now, the, it's around the beard, so it's not too bad, but this cape is really nice. It's a, I mean, it's better than the one that they had on him later, and it's better than some of the ones that they had with him that you got uh, for free. So, and then we've got the lightsaber right here. Does it come off? Mm, I'm not going to pull too hard, but it's definitely a separate piece of plastic. So, the scale of this is not is not as it is in the movie. Um, this fish was enormous. It was the size of the ship that Qui-Gon, Jar Jar, and Obi-Wan were swimming in. But he stands fairly well by himself. Take a look. And then put the spear here in his hand. It's a different, interesting figure. And I think it's really cool. Um, now, take a look at the fish again. Um, we do have these extra fins here that we can use as hands to kind of put it up. But even then, they barely touch. The jaws are impressive. And that's pretty solid, too. So it's kind of a crab fish, which is an interesting blend of different things. So, you know, Lucasfilm always trying to make things unique and different. And I really like this. These antennas are awesome, too. Something else for it to feel out. Take a look at the back here. So decent figure. Um, as monsters go, I wish I had more monsters from Attack of the Clones, actually. Um, it's neat that if you look at Star Wars on a whole, every movie had a giant monster in it in some capacity. It was either a beast that was a beast of burden that was ridden upon or used as a, as a weapon or um, in Attack of the Clones, you see that they're thrown into the arena for sport. And then in this one, we had them living in nature. They were beasts of burdens. But in Revenge of the Sith, there is no big monster. It was removed from the movie. It was something that was supposed to be on Mustafar. And that's actually bigger than the beast that Obi-Wan is riding on in that in um, in Utapau. You could say that's the beast in movie, but it's more like a vehicle. This was a giant beast, so kind of like on the scale of the Rancor. Um, but as figures go, it's actually pretty neat. Um, I really do like the fish, and I guess I would maybe like string it up and hang it somewhere, and then kind of give him like a swimming like kind of thing towards him, but very different uh, toy for Hasbro. Really unique. Uh, really, it's a neat monster. Springs are in good shape. Uh, 1999 Hasbro, I think it is. So definitely a conversation piece to actually put out because it's such a unique thing. So again, I'd like to wish you a happy anniversary of The Phantom Menace. Yes, I do remember exactly where I was. And I remember that I did see the film four times in the theater. I actually saw it the next day, um, about two or three o'clock in the afternoon. I woke up and went and saw it again. Um, so... 
it's one of those days. And it had a nice catch with my dad playing baseball afterwards talking about the movie. So, everybody, have a great Phantom Menace Day. It's also the anniversary of Revenge of the Sith. Um, I don't have any Revenge of the Sith toys out of the, still in the box, so I just decided to go with this one. So enjoy your Star Wars, unofficial Star Wars Day, Phantom Menace Day, whatever you'd like to call it. But this is a look at a slightly different toy from that era. Thank you.